Hey, welcome back to day four of my Road to Sun and Moon Challenge. For those who don't know what that is, it's basically where I'm going to be doing 30 top five or top ten lists in a row. Most likely top five, just because I have a limitation with this new app I'm using. I hate the limitation, but I like what you can do with this app, so it's worth it. Anyway, today we're going to be doing my top five favorite Sinnoh region Pokemon, or Generation 4. And to be honest with you, this is probably my favorite generation of all of them, just because it had the most features and really cool Pokemon, and I just like how it pretty much updated the game metagame to what it is now. So, it just, it was awesome. I wouldn't say it's my favorite games, but it's just one of my favorite generations. Anyway, um, and also, some of my favorite Pokemon of all time is on this list. Like, legitimately, almost all of them are on my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time list, except for two of them but let's move on all right let's get to number five right now and that is infernape the fire monkey pokemon or whatever you want to call it infernape is a cool ass pokemon just look at his design i mean he's a freaking monkey with a torch on his head <laughs> no but uh the reason why i love him is mainly because of the anime Ash's Infernape had a really cool backstory which i won't be spoiling for those who haven't seen it if you want to check it out please check out this diamond and pearl anime it's not it's a little cheesy, but it does have some good moments. Um, and that's honestly the only reason why he's at number five on this list is because I just loved how Ash's Infernape was portrayed or portrayed in that anime. Like, it was a sad story, and uh, I loved it. <laughs> um, I do like how he was in the games. I used him, like, once or twice, but honestly, in the games, I think it's slightly overrated compared to Empoleon, who's my personal favorite out of the starters. The only reason why Empoleon's not on this list is because Infernape beat it just because of the anime. Plus, Empoleon wasn't really shown in the anime too much, which kind of sucked because I loved the design of that Pokemon from day one. I mean, it's a penguin with a freaking trident on his head. What's cooler than that? Plus, a steel typing? Ugh. You get the point. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the whole reason why I love Infernape. It's just because how he was portrayed in the anime. It was a fantastic story. Um, anyway, let's move on to number four. Now, on the last list I said I loved Gardevoir, and that's true because at number four is Gallade, which is the male counterpart. Gallade are exclusively 100% male Pokemon, so when I say him, I actually mean it this time. And in order to get a, a Gallade, you have to evolve a male Curlia using a Dawnstone. But this awesome fire, sorry, no, psychic fighting type is absolutely one of the best Pokemon in the game. It learns so many great moves like Leaf, Blade, Night Slash, he can learn like Zen Headbutt, he can learn so many moves that can help him cover so many types, it's just such a good Pokemon. Plus, I love his design. The only thing I don't like though is that how his like, crotch area, I know I'm saying this, it's weird, it's kind of like a football shape. I don't really like that. But other than that, he's a fantastic, fantastic Pokemon. I love using him. Plus, his Mega Evolution looks like freaking Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh, which is awesome. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Seto Kaiba? Man, I feel so old. <laughs> um, back in my day. No, just kidding. Uh, I love this Pokemon so much. It's a great, great Pokemon. And I just like how he has like, that warrior mohawk kind of look. And, um, it's supposed to be like a Roman helmet, I think, in terms of design. And, uh, yeah, just in general, this thing's a force to be reckoned with. And you know it's good when one of the Elite Four uses it as their main Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I just noticed all these Pokemon are some way used in the Elite Four and Champion teams. It's kind of weird. I did not... That was just a coincidence, too. <laughs> so let's move on to number three. Next up on the list is a bit of a surprising one, and that is Roserade. I don't know why I love this Pokemon so much. I think it's mainly because I always usually use it when I do a playthrough of Pokemon Platinum and not use Torterra. It can learn some pretty good moves like um, Energy Ball, Poison Bomb, Sludge Bomb. Sorry, I got mixed up with the name for a second. <laughs> It can also learn to move Toxic Spikes, which is a great, great setup move. It basically, by using Toxic Spikes twice and setting it up on your opponent, basically whenever they switch into another Pokemon, that Pokemon instantly gets Toxic. By doing it once, it's just Poison, but Toxic is a little bit different because it's a status condition known as Badly Poison, which basically means that Pokemon only has a few turns to live. No matter what they do, they'll die in a few turns no matter what. Normal Poison just does a select... 
a specific number of damage. Each time a toxic damage is done, it does more damage from what it did last turn. So it wears down the Pokemon quickly, which is a fantastic, fantastic setup. Thing is, it learns it at a very early level, and you have to evolve it pretty quickly once you catch the Bidu, because... But do if you evolve it too late, it won't learn toxic spikes, and your whole strategy is probably screwed up. <laughs> but Roserade's design is just beautiful, in my opinion. Plus, I kind of like how it's supposed to be kind of like a uh, masked vigilante kind of theme. Uh, there was even an anime where a Roserade went, an episode of the anime even happened where a Roserade went around and did like crime fighting and stuff as a disguised superhero in some way. It was a pretty interesting episode. Um, but I still love this Pokemon. It's all—it's always going to be my favorite Grass-type Pokemon of all time. Well, at least one of them. I really hope it's available in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Because other than the fact that I'm going to be using Rowlet, if I do another playthrough of Sun and Moon, I definitely want this on my team. I kind of prefer it over a lot of the newer Grass-type Pokemon nowadays. <laughs> um, but yeah, enough of that. Let's move on to number two. Roserade, number three. Great Pokemon. Use it. Use it. It's such a good Pokemon. But its evolution line is a bit of a strange one, because in order to get it, it's pretty complicated. First up, you have to catch a Bidoo. If you're playing Platinum, you could get it pretty early, I think even before the first gym, if you do it right. Um, but do it right. <laughs> you have to evolve it by happiness and daytime, which could be a struggle, especially if you want that Toxic Spikes on it. And then in order to evolve from Rosalia to Roserade, you have to give it a Shiny Stone, which you can't get until, uh, I think, around the same time as the 6th gym if I'm not mistaken so you're gonna have a Rosalia for some time unless if you get lucky and get the stone pretty early anyway that's how you evolve it let's move on to number two next up is a Pokemon that one of my best friends loves to death and that is Lucario this is a fantastic fantastic Pokemon and I honestly thought it was a legendary Pokemon back in the day but then I found out it wasn't but I just love this Pokemon's epic design it's a fantastic Pokemon uh I I just like it's uh, theme, how it's like an aura Pokemon, it could sense aura and stuff like that, and um, I like the uh, story in the games and anime that basically there's a race of people with this power, and like Lucario is one of the last living relics of that, and there's only like one other person in the whole world currently that has that power also. It's a fantastic uh, story, and I think they're called Aura, aura Guardians, that's what they're called. Um, I forgot the guy's name that had it, but he was um, the guy who gives you the uh, Riolu egg in Platinum. Um, which is fantastic. For those that don't know, Riolu evolves into Lucario from happiness during the daytime. Um, I just love Lucario. You know why? I don't really need to explain it. It's just look at those stats. His mega evolution also looks pretty damn cool. So, yeah. Fantastic, 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 fantastic Pokemon. Next up is a Pokemon that is my personal favorite Pokemon of all time. Not just on this list, but straight up in general. It's a Pokemon that is powerful and used to be, like, the best Pokemon in the metagame. And probably still is to some people. It also belongs to my favorite champion of all time. The Pokemon I'm talking about is Garchomp. Garchomp is a fantastic Pokemon. I know I say that a lot, but I mean it for this one. Its stats are amazing. Its Mega Evolution, honestly, though it didn't need one, it, its Mega Evolution is still really awesome. And Cynthia is a great, great great champion and was the first champion i've ever beaten in a pokemon game so that's why garchomp has a special place in my heart because it was the ace the ace pokemon of cynthia and it was the last pokemon i defeated for the first champion i've ever defeated so that's why it has a special place in my heart because it was really the first time i've ever beat a pokemon game and I was like, yes, I did it! <laughs> it was a great accomplishment, in my opinion. And Garchomp, for that reason, is a special Pokemon in my heart. And I love using it in games. It's a great Pokemon. Like, give this thing some good movesets. I personally go with, like, Earthquake, Dragon Claw. Um, and the other two moves are usually different each time. But sometimes Crunch for Stab and... Not stab, but for like coverage and other reasons. And I usually go with like a, a coverage, another coverage move for my last one, like f maybe flamethrower to get rid of ice types. Because Garchomp is a pretty quick Pokemon, so it could deal with slower Pokemon pretty easily. When you're playing metagame, give this thing Iron Head. It's a great move. It's a steel type move, 100% accuracy, or maybe 90%, and it could deal with fairy types very easily. Anyway, Garchomp's number one. Love it to death. Gotta go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.